Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So today I'm taking the metro again and I'm getting off at Bonaventure station in downtown. So here in this uh, station atrium, they have this nice ice skating place in the summer. Really cool. Yeah. And outside the station, we have these skyscrapers, these modern glassy buildings of downtown. Since I've already finished my job at the summer camp, I have more time to explore around Montreal and today I'm coming to Dorchester Square. This is a really uh, peaceful area, kind of like an oasis in the middle of downtown. And this park is kind of like a squirrel land. Look at these squirrels chasing around one another and they're, they're also kind of sneaking around uh, for food. Yeah, there's an there's a monument behind me and this plaza is surrounded by all of these nice uh, foliages and buildings. So right over here we have this uh, Mary Queen of the World Cathedral. Okay, so sitting down on the bench, I'm ready to work on a one hour sketch. Before putting ink line on paper, I like to take a minute or two to sort of visualize uh, the size and placement of those major elements of the building and the foliages. Now I'm ready to draw. So the speed of this drawing process is four times faster than real time. So now I'm drawing the dome of the cathedral, the key part of this building. And now I'm observing these curves on the surface to show the half sphere really well. Okay, so these lines are actually curving around and not straight lines. And starting to add uh, this tower on the very top of the dome. It's a very short little cylinder. Yeah, and it was more layers on top. And keep connecting the next shape on top and higher. Yeah, on the highest point is the cross. And there it is. Adding a little bit hatching to give a little bit three dimension. And underneath the dome, we'll have another layer of rim. Yeah. This is all about like connecting one part after another. But before I put the first line on, on paper, I already visualized the size of the dome that I should be drawing. So it's not too big or too small that I want to include this whole big structure on my page. And yeah, just keep adding the top floor of the cathedral and very spontaneously adding these details like the windows and yeah and the columns in between and this part of the cathedral in general is a large and wide cylinder with all those details in between and underneath this cylinder, I have this triangular shape. And under the triangle, yeah, adding some details for the triangular rooftop, there's also another cylinder. But before that, I'm coming back to the top of the dome to add these tiny little windows in between each of these curves. Yeah, these are very small. And as you can see, I'm drawing pretty fast and not you know worrying too much about making these windows look exactly the same because these are all in, in different perspectives so yeah so the shape should be a slightly different smaller on both sides yeah and just adding these minor details in between and drawing these window frames and the bars of the windows yeah these are actually very very skinny so, so i think my proportion is a little bit you know, shrink compared to the uh, reality. So when we're drawing architectures, we don't have to be accurate as architects. So some minor uh, mistakes like inaccuracies in proportions or placement, it, it can happen when I'm sketching directly with an ink pen. But my point of, of sketching is to capture the moment very quickly and capture the spirit the essence of that building and not necessarily the uh, architectural accuracy. Okay, so the lower part of the cathedral 
is mainly covered by these trees. So as you can see, I'm drawing the tree trunks and connecting those large tree trunks with uh, big branches and then the twigs. So when I'm drawing trees, I start with the, the trunk first and then those major branches and those tiny little claw-like twigs. Yeah, so that's my process of drawing trees. Always start with the main body part, the trunk, and then extending all the way to these little twigs. So when we're drawing trees, you don't have to draw every single twig. Just draw as many as you can, capture the uh, general form of that tree, and then let go, move on to the next one. Uh, this tree it looks a little smaller because it is in the distance. So now I'm actually drawing this man sitting on the bench underneath this big tree over here, adding a human figure to a landscape that really gives a sense of proportion. In this case, it makes the cathedral look much bigger with this man, with this tiny man sitting down here. And behind the bench that the, the man is sitting on, there's a uh, there's little tree. And a little bit more on the left, there is this lamp post. So I'm just drawing that comparing the height of this lamp post with the height of the cathedral. So the top of this lamp post it ends around the middle of the cathedral there. Yeah, so I do have reference points of uh, the height of everything in this picture. By comparing uh, most of these uh, things with the height of the cathedral, because the cathedral is the highest object in this scenery. Every other things can be compared to it. And drawing another tree on the very left, very really loosely because things on the side it could become you know less detailed. The main focus is the cathedral and the trees very closely around it. Yeah, and keep adding more trees around the back and the top of the benches. Yeah, adding some more branches and twigs. I need to put some more time and effort and details in the middle of this sketch around the cathedral and I'm only drawing these branches and twigs not drawing the leaves because I'll be painting the leaves with watercolor brushstrokes. So before I started this sketch I already planned the techniques I'll be using uh, sketching this out so I already know that I won't be you know doing all of those leaf details with this ink pen and yeah just keep it really simple this way it saves a lot of time not drawing those leaves and just painting with quick brush strokes instead. And now behind those uh, foliages, I have some more very vague details of the rest of the cathedral around the middle to the bottom areas. Yeah, another uh, piece of very short cylinder. And yeah, some more very loose lines because I can't really see the perfect outline of the cathedral. It's pretty much covered by all those leaves. Yeah, and in relationship to the cathedral, the downtown modern building behind on the left, the height is somewhere around the bottom of the dome. So there's always comparison going on. Yeah, so as you can see, I'm using very gentle and loose lines to draw the downtown building behind. And at the same time, I'm always comparing the height of these buildings in relationship with the height of the cathedral. Yeah, so the very top of this downtown building is somewhere around aligning with the middle of the dome. Just adding these window details very loosely. I don't want uh, the details of these buildings to compete with the cathedral. The central point, the central focus of the sketch is the cathedral. But these buildings in behind are still pretty important in establishing where the, where the cathedral is situating. Yeah, so just keeping these lines pretty light with gentle pressure using my hand and keeping the lines very loose and not as strong as the cathedrals. And add some more organic lines for the tree on the very left. And now I'm starting to work on the buildings on the right side of the cathedral. Yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty simple prism shape. 
I think it's, it's a, a broadcasting station behind, and there's actually another big tree down here, and there is this monument. So as you can see, this monument is the shape of a prism. So pretty much in everyday situations, the most common shapes that we see are just three. So number one is prism and cubes. Number two, cylinders. Number three, spheres. Okay, so I think this uh, urban sketch contains all of these three um, fundamental three-dimensional three -dimensional shapes. Um, the dome of the cathedral is half a sphere, and the body part of the cathedral contains several pieces of cylinders, and this monument is a prism, and the buildings behind are also prisms. Now I'm just adding some more, uh, there's actually windows seeing through those foliages, another window there. Adding some very quick uh, parallel lines to show the brick texture in between those leaves. So the way that I'm drawing those bricks is one of the ways that we simplify an urban sketch. When we're drawing bricks on any buildings, we don't have to draw every single piece of bricks. We can always make it really loosely, so it's very relaxing for the viewers to look at. Yeah, and add some more shapes and lines that I see in between these uh, trees. Lamp posts on the other side of the street, another person walking on the other side. And windows as well, a little bit more brick textures just to keep it balanced with the right side. Yeah, very quickly and loosely. And there's, there's a little side chamber of this cathedral right here that I missed. So now I'm just drawing that. And some final details, that's it. So here is the look of the finished line work. And it took me about 40 minutes to finish. So for most urban sketches, we put a lot of time and effort on the line work. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So some people have asked me to, uh, to show them how to paint a sky. So here I am putting this sky painting process into real time speed. So you can see very clearly of how I painted this uh, sky. So I just wetted the sky area with clear water by squeezing my large Hobane water brush. Around the corner, I want to include a little bit of the blue sky showing. So now I'm just adding on, adding on these uh, patchy brush strokes of cerulean blue. It's kind of blending with the clear water. And this is how I want it to look like because the sky is never perfectly flat. Adding a little bit stronger of cerulean blue yeah, so even though we're using the same color, we can control the amount of water that we mix into it. So the sky can look more dynamic. Okay, so that's, that's that corner. Most of the sky is full of these clouds. Right now I'm putting on this super diluted lemon yellow because on a sunny day, I see the sunshine color is being reflected onto these white puffy clouds. And the direction of my brush strokes are also very, very mindful. So I'm paying attention to the direction of movement of these clouds. So these brush strokes are actually moving in diagonal ways following the movement that I feel of these clouds. So yeah, the sky is three dimensional and it contains a perspective. So when we're looking up at the sky from the ground level, most of the clouds are moving in diagonal ways uh, toward the front or, or shifting back. Okay, so it's never just flat. So when we're drawing and painting from real life, I think it's more than just copying the shapes and colors that we see. You really have to feel with your heart at the same time. Okay, so that's the first layer for these clouds, the reflective yellow color from the sunshine. Now, wet into wet, I just mix um, 
this color is kind of like a purplish blue, like cobalt blue mixed with a little bit royal purple. Really nice color. Yeah, so the shade color of clouds are not just gray, the color that you mix water into black. Okay, so if you look very deeply, you're going to notice that um, the color is more of a bluish or purplish gray. Kind of like the color that I mix over here, or you might have your own sensations. And also using diagonal lines following the direction of movement of these clouds. As you can see, every single brushstroke can be of a different shape and a different kind of purplish blue. Yeah, this is a very um, impressionistic way of painting the sky. Yeah, and using this diagonal direction to show the clouds is also a great way to expand this narrow sky area, creating an illusion of a much grander sky area. Yeah, and keep painting. Uh, the patches of shade on the very right hand side. It's almost there, just keeping it really simple with just two layers and not over stirring. And once in a while, I might mix in a little bit of cerulean blue or ultramarine blue into this uh, blue purple mixture according to my sensations. Okay, so there's no fixed recipe about how to paint. Um, a cloudy sky. So the main color, color choices are ultramarine blue, royal purple or magenta, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Just play around with the different combinations according to how you see and how you feel. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. I'm done with painting the sky. Now I'm ready to move to the middle part of this sketch. So the speed is two times faster now compared to real time. Okay, so I just wetted the uh, area underneath the sky with clear water and now I'm just adding this uh, muted yellow very loosely. This is kind of like a mix of um, yellow ochre with a little bit of lemon yellow, maybe a tiny bit of leftover orange just for the base color of the buildings in the back and also for the cathedral. And this first layer actually contains a lot of water and very minimal amount of uh, paint pigment. So that's why a lot of professional artists, their uh, paint actually lasts for a very, very long time because uh, most of the layering of watercolors, it requires a lot more water than the, than the uh, paint pigment. Yeah, especially when we're using professional quality paint, we don't have to use a lot of pigment, a lot of water, just to make the colors very juicy and loose and flexible. And just adding this bit of lime green mixed with a little bit of uh, medium yellow and also dilute it to paint the first layer of the dome, the two, two domes and the rooftop underneath the large dome blending on a little bit stronger lime green so there's a bit of transition of colors for the dome and roof uh, leftover grayish brown for the monument yeah so just keep spreading this muted yellow brown here and there adding a little bit of leftover gray um, yeah so this is leftover gray was mixed with ultramarine blue a little bit royal purple for those glossy parts of the downtown buildings and also keep adding this muted yellow here around the left bottom side. Yeah, nice and loose. So no contrast yet. When we are painting watercolors, we gradually add the contrast and not just getting all of the uh, colors and tones right away in one layer. Yeah, so that's pretty much for the first layer. For the areas underneath the sky, and now I'm gradually adding a little bit more contrast. I just grabbed a little bit of raw umber to paint in between these columns for the top floor of the cathedral. Yeah, just raw umber. It's a kind of dark brown. And also a little bit in between these uh, stripes 
of the dome. Tiny little brush strokes here and there. Yeah, underneath the ring. And also in between the columns for the windows. A little bit more uh, lime green containing less water for this little roof. And also in between these bars on the dome. So there's a little, so now the dome is shining. And there's darker values around the bottom of the dome. Yeah, same for this little dome over here in the back. And for this long roof. Yeah, so these green rooftops actually adds more interest to this whole cathedral. It really kind of guides the viewer's eyes around this sketch rather than just plain yellow brown. And now I'm ready to paint the foliages. So this is a mix of um, Viridian green with lots of uh, lemon yellow. Yeah, the, just, this is just the first layer and I'm also using a variety of different brush strokes to show the textures of leaves. Yeah, these trees have very loose leaves in smaller clusters joined together. And also we can see the cathedral color in between large brush strokes. Yeah, just painting these trees very loosely. Every brush stroke can be a little bit different. So my process of painting these foliages are pretty much like half from observation and half from my impressions. So it's not about copying what's in front of you. It's like impossible to capture every single cluster of leaves on those trees. Yeah, so just um, relying on my memory and from my impression as well and not just like stressing about making it exactly the same as those trees. Just relax and enjoy the process of these greens emerging on the white spaces. And now second layer for these foliages, wet into wet, is a uh, fresher and medium green. You can use Viridian Green or any kind of uh, dark shade of green from your palette. You don't have to use my recipe. It's like a mid-tone, a mid-green. Yeah, most of this mid-tones around the middle to the bottom of each tree. The top part for these trees are pretty bright because the leaves are more um, close together in the middle of the tree. And again, using little choppy brush strokes to give a, the uh, illusion of layers of leaves. And so depending on the weather, and also depending on how watery your paint is, the drying time is different in every situation. So now I'm actually adding on, yeah, this is still the second layer, the mid to dark tones of greens for the middle of these trees. So now these trees look more three-dimensional and not flat anymore with two, just two layers of two to three different green tones. Yeah, just add some more. So again, every single brush stroke can be of a different shape, size, and containing a different tone of green. And moving on to the next layer, the darkest greens. So I just make the green tone even darker by mixing in a little bit of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of um, ultramarine blue. Yeah, and this darkest green tone is actually very minimal around the very middle and or also the very bottom of these trees and not overpaint the trees. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the trees, adding up this three dimension for the buildings in the back, in between these foliages, painting the benches. And now painting these tree trunks and large branches with the dark tone of brown. So we can make a brown into a darker shade by mixing a bit of ultramarine blue into burnt sienna. Yeah, so there's more um, attention grabber there in the foreground area, using red to paint those signs for the buildings in the back and the, and the Canadian flag. 
adding a little bit more uh, shade tones of dark browns for the cathedral in the middle and needs a little bit more uh, intensity because it's the central focus above these foliages. Yeah, just adding some quick final polish. Yeah, just so that building right there really looks like a three-dimensional prism with that bit of lateral gray on the left side. Yeah, tiny little brush strokes for the final polish. No huge changes. And that's it. Here's the look of my finished sketch. Yeah, so it just took me a, a little over one hour, like 70 minutes to do this whole sketch with ink and watercolors. As you can see, I'm leaving some white spaces around the borders uh, on the bottom over here and also on the uh, right hand side, just so there's more flexibility and also relaxation to look at this page. So thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for future updates. So I update this channel two to three times a week. And I will see you again very soon, everyone. Have a great day.